Hey guys, so let's talk about nebulae for a minute. The evidence that I'm about to show you may shock you, but just keep an open mind, stick with me, and I believe you will see the logic in what I'm about to tell you. These nebulae, like this one right here, are not in outer space like we've been taught. This is called the California Nebula. This is an image that I captured myself. But what if I told you that nebulae are not in space, but they're right here in our own atmosphere. They're in an area of our atmosphere that they call the ionosphere. What is the ionosphere, you ask? Well, in layman's terms, it is the area of our atmosphere where the air becomes electric. I mean, did you really think that we were taking pictures of dust and gas from trillions and trillions and trillions of miles away or even trillions of light years away? No, they're somewhere between 50 miles and 600 miles away. Let me show you the research that I've been doing and you'll see why I believe this. So if you look up, what is the ionosphere? Simple definition. Okay, it tells you it's a very active part of the atmosphere and it grows and it shrinks depending on the energy that it absorbs from the sun. The name ionosphere comes from the fact that gases in these layers are excited by solar radiation to form ions, which have an electrical charge. And guess what happens when certain gases are ionized? They glow, they emit light. Now, when understanding the ionosphere, you need to remember these colors up here, the blue, the red, and the green. Because coincidentally, that's what color most nebulae are. They're either, they're either purple, red, green, and some of them are blue but most of them are red in my experience. And what do nebulae have in common with neon lights, you ask? Quite simple. Neon lights are nothing more than gases that are ionized, ionized gases. Just like when gases are ionized in the ionosphere, they glow and emit light. You fill a glass tube full of gases and and hook you know an electric charge to it well it then ionizes the gases inside the tube causing it to glow in these beautiful purple red and green colors as in the definition here a potential of several thousand volts applied to the electrodes ionizes the gas in the tube causing it to emit colored light and I'm going to move out of your way so you can read the top part of this definition here. Um, pause and read if you need to, but I'm going to move on. I know this is really going to break a lot of you NASA fans, um, a lot of your hearts, because you really like the idea of taking pictures of dust particles and gas particles that are millions and millions of light years away. But you're actually not. You're actually photographing ionized gases that are in our upper atmosphere, no more than 50 to 500 miles away. But for you Tesla fans, um, I think the ionosphere might be what Tesla called the ether because Tesla knew how to harness energy from the atmosphere, but it was from the ether, he called it. Um, he, he, he described it as an area of our atmosphere um, where the air becomes electric. So I, I literally think that they renamed the ether the ionosphere because both are, you know, where the air becomes electric and it's basically described as like this super fluid where um, gases can become ionized and electrically charged and emit their own light. Um, so yeah, that's, that's what I think. 